welcome back to NRM 638 Python scripting for ArcGIS applications spring semester 2015 this is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks in this session we're going to start working with the Python window in ArcMap so if you start ArcMap under the geoprocessing menu there's going to be the Python window so let's start the Python window Okay, so the Python window has a help panel, and if you right mouse click anywhere in the window, you could place that help panel anywhere you want. So you could put it on the right, or you could put it on the bottom, or on the left, or on the top. I typically put it on the bottom. And basically, this will help you with syntax in Python commands that are going to use a geoprocessing tool, typically in ArcMap. And that is arcpy dot. So if we type in arcpy dot, there's a series of geoprocessing tools that we can call, or we could set some environments or um, loads, extensions, things like that using the arcpy dot. Okay, so what we'll do first is if we right mouse click and go to format, we could specify how we want to format our Python window in ArcMap. So for example, I'll go and say I want my font to be Arial and I want it to be 16 points and my errors will be in red, my warnings will be in uh, dark orange, etc. So you could basically specify how you want this window to be formatted and then OK. So now I've got my font is going to be a little larger font, and it's an Arial font. Okay, so if we were just working in ArcMap, we would go to Geoprocessing Environments, and we might specify our workspace. So where are we going to get our feature classes from? And we might want to specify under Geoprocessing Options, to overwrite the output of geoprocessing operations and we might specify add the results of the geoprocessing operations to the display. Okay, so you do that as a user, you would also have to do that in your ArcPy Python window. So basically these options are independent of the ArcPy Python window. So if we go to our ArcPy Python window if we type in arcpy.env, it allows us to specify um, arcmap environment variables. So then dot, and we want to set our workspace. So our workspace is going to be equal to, and then the easiest way to set your workspace is go to the catalog window and then drag the workspace into so we'll use this test geo database from last week and that will be our workspace. So now it will be smart enough to look in that workspace for tables or feature classes. Okay, we could also type in arcpy.env dot overwrite output. So if we want to overwrite output, we would make that equal to true. And that would be analogous to us going to geoprocessing options and checking this on. So checking on overwrite output. And then arcpy.env add. So add outputs to map. We'll make that true. And that would be analogous to geoprocessing options and checking this on add results of geoprocessing operations to display. Okay, we also would use ArcPy to load extensions and check for ArcMap product info. So for example, ArcPy dot product info. So what is the product for ArcMap? Is it an ArcView, Arc Editor, or Arc Info license? So in this case, it's an ARC info license. And then do we have an extension? So arcpy.check extension. 
So down here in the help panel, it says it checks to see if the license is available to be checked out. And we would have extension and then a keyword. So 3D for 3D analyst, spatial for spatial analyst. So do we have spatial analyst extension available to us? It is available. So that would be analogous to you going up to customize and then extensions and then seeing what extensions are available. So we do have spatial analysts available. So then if we want to use a spatial analyst extension, we would go arcpy dot checkout extension. So I press the tab key. Oops. I'll double click on it. So we're going to check out the extension spatial. So that allows us access to any geoprocessing tool in the spatial analyst toolbox. And that would be analogous to going um, customize extensions and checking on spatial analyst. Okay, and when you're done, you may have a spatial analyst license that's shared among users in your lab or in your office. So if you no longer need the spatial analyst tools, you would return it. So arcpy.checkin extension spatial. And in the help, it says once the extension license has been retrieved, and then you can return it to the license manager. So licenses are returned to the license manager using this check in extension. So basically that returns it to the license manager so other users could use that license if that's how you have your lab set up. Okay, so let's grab our streamlines from our test geo database and put it in our data frame. So let's say we want to do a definition query. As a user, you would right mouse click and go to properties and then definition query. And you might do something like name equals get unique values Bear Creek. Okay, we could do the same thing in the ArcPy window. So I'll just copy this expression. So control C to copy and I'll cancel and cancel. So then in ArcPy, Let's make a string, so query is going to be the name of my string, equals, and then control V to paste. So now what's inside this string called query? So now that's what's inside that string called query. So we could use that to do a definition query to create a layer called Bear Creek. So that would be arcpy and then dot make feature layer. So then as soon as I press left parentheses down here in help, it tells me what it wants. And basically the in features is required and that will be our streamlines and then comma and then the out layer. And the out layer we name ourselves. So I'll call this Bear Creek layer. And then Optional is a WHERE clause, so that would be our definition query, which I have in this string variable called query. So then we'll just say that's query. And then the rest are optional. So anytime you see a curly brace, it means it's an optional parameter. So we'll execute this geoprocessing tool, make feature layer. From our streamlines, we'll make a layer called Bear Creek layer based on this string variable, which is a query name equals Bear Creek. Okay, so then if we look at our table of contents, we've got our Bear Creek layer. And then we could open up the attribute table and it, indeed it is just a polyline and it has a name Bear Creek. Okay, so any geoprocessing tool has an ArcPy command to run that tool. So if we go to our desktop help, for example, let's search for the tool buffer. So buffer analysis. So for each tool, there'll be the syntax for the ArcPy window. So it would be arcpy.bufferanalysis, the input feature, the output feature, the buffer distance, 
and then some optional parameters in curly brace. So basically the input features will be my input line feature in this example. My output feature class will be the polygons representing the buffers and then the distance. So the distance of features will be buffered. So let's try that in ArcPy. So it would simply be ArcPy buffer analysis and then it wants the input features to buffer so that's going to be my streamlines which is in my table of contents and then the output feature class so I've specified my arcpy.env.workspace so that's where it's going to output to and I'll call this stream buffers 100 meters and then comma and then the third required parameter is a buffer distance or field. So I'll use a buffer distance of 100. And then we'll execute that and that should buffer our streams by 100 meters. So then if we look at our table of contents, We've got stream buffers by 100 meters, and here are the stream buffers, and here's the stream lines. Okay, so we could retrieve the results from any geoprocessing operation. We could do it as a user by going to the results window, so geoprocessing results. So here are the messages from the buffer tool executed this buffer tool start time and stop time. You can also re retrieve those messages in the ArcPy or the Python window. So if we go back to our Python window, we could say print ArcPy get messages. And then there's severity. So if you want all the messages, you could put a zero or a blank. If you only want warning messages, so for example, um, output already exists would be a warning message, you would put a one. And if you want the error messages, for example, um, invalid output name, that would be an error message, you would put a two. So let's just do all messages. So this is the string that's returned from dot get messages. Executing buffer streamlines to this geodatabase output stream buffers 100 meters of full buffer um, don't dissolve etc and then the start time it succeeded and the elapsed time we could also get each of these lines so we could execute a print arcpy dot get message and get message zero, which would be the first message. And then if I press the up arrow key, I could recall the command and get the next message. And then I press the up arrow key to recall the command and get the next message. So then basically you can get whatever pieces of the message you want by saying I want either the first the second or the third. So I might execute a command and then as soon as it's done I might say arcpy dot get message two to tell the user it's completed that geoprocessing operation. So that's what we would get succeeded elapsed time 43 seconds. Or we might be documenting our geoprocessing operation so we might want to store what we did in a text file so we might say txt line equals arcpy dot get message and just get message the first message and then this is in txt line and you could output that to a text file if you wanted to okay so if you go to the blackboard website i've got a quiz question for you that will lead you to the next video session